Tinker Allerlein, Taylor Hayden, Soldier Bland, Spot the Mole. Quite. Ways and means, George. Ricky Tarr will go to Paris. He'll make use of the appropriate embassy facilities to send a signal to the head of London Station. Something, 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 which we'll now concoct. The message will be, have information vital to the safeguarding of the service. Request immediate meeting, personal. Remember, vital to the safeguarding of the service. No mistakes, Ricky. Your head's on the block. Not the only one, Peter. Esther Hayes, it did say two full milk bottles and all's well and you may enter, yes? Yes, George, and that's the second time. Is it? Well, let's not pretend we're not nervous. Check, George. Ready? To record? Shall we try it? I'll go upstairs. What would you like? Monte Verdi, anything Berlin? Mick Jagger? This machinery, installed at great expense to the British taxpayer, is voice activated. When I stop speaking, the tape will stop recording. See? Old man river, that old man river, he just keeps rolling. Hello, here's something. Soldiers just arriving. That's all three of them in there now. And to start his orders. Now, the important point is who gets away first. Just going for a walk. Back with you in a minute. Peter? All clear? 
As far as I can judge, no promises. I think you should come down now. Proceed. Proceed. What's that? Nothing, just fiddling. Just leaving. Can't quite make him out. Hold a taxi right to the door. Cheeky. Thank you. Joints. Scotch, bloody great big one. Have you anything on you that you would prefer I should? How many cents? How many? Two hundred? Three? Four? Stop that! All right, all right! Are you armed, Bill? I'm a Soviet diplomat. This behavior... Shut up! Peter, would you please telephone Percy Allerline and ask him and Roy Bland to come here immediately? Then Lacon, then Toby Esterhazy. I think the first thing to do is to play them this evening's tapes. That should save a great deal of time in explanations. And he of Gluttony. Alex, really. Oh, they're on. 
Do you mind if I finish my drink, George? There was no one out there you noticed. Quiet as the grave. Very proper, George. Don't want anything irrelevant, do we? Very tidy, George. Congratulations, George. Next step, gentlemen. Would you agree with me, Percy, that our best course is to make some positive use of Bill Hayden? We need to salvage whatever's left of the networks he's betrayed. Yes. We sell Bill to Moscow Center for as many of our men in the field as can be saved. For humanitarian reasons. Professionally, of course, they're finished. Quite. Then the sooner you open negotiations with Carla, the better. Well, you're a much better place to talk terms with our friend downstairs than I am. Polyakov remains your direct link with Carla. The only difference is this time you know it. It's definitely your job, Percy. You're still chief, officially. For the moment. Very well, George. Excuse me, sir. Uh, Mr. Gillum says, is it all right if the Inquisitors take Mr. Hayden away now? Shall I go first? Percy. I want Fawn to stay with I'm sorry about the assault. Unprofessional. It was just that it would have to be Bill Hayden, wouldn't it? He was always our hero, in capital letters. I mean, for the younger lot, my kind anyway. The antiquated English patriot. Never mind all the dirt we have to do, it's for England. The funny thing about all this, it's quite an effort now not to think of him with affection. I suppose Bill would say that means you've grown up, Peter. Always good for a laugh, wasn't he, Bill? I'd like to thank you, by the way. You helped enormously. No, truly, Peter. Thank you.
Lacon assures me there's been no coercion. I hope that's true. Oh, yes. No complaints, George. Bit of a nosebleed. Keep feeling dizzy. I'm sure it's just the excitement of it all. Why have you been weeping? Sheer exasperation. Really, the pettiness of our inquisitors. They're utterly incompetent. They actually believe I know the names of Carla's other moles around the world. Idiots. I can't talk to people like that. But you're prepared to say something to me, according to Lakin. Can't Percy get a move on doing his horse trading with Carla? Oh, I'm sure it'll only be a matter of a day or two now. What do you want to know? Oh. Why? When? How? <laughs> you ask that? Because it was necessary! That's why. Someone had to. We were bluffed. You, me, control, all of us. The circus talent spotters all those years ago, they picked us when we were golden with hope. Told us we were on our way to the Holy Grail. A lifetime of glory in front of us. Service to the great cause. Freedom's protectors. <laughs> What a question. Why? Do you know what's killing Western democracy, George? Greed and constipation. Moral, political, ascetic. I hate America very deeply. The economic repression of the masses, institutionalized. Even Lenin couldn't foresee the extent of that. Britain Oh, dear. No viability whatever in world affairs. I suppose that's when it began. Turning my eyes to the East, I mean. When I saw how trivial we'd become as a nation. Say, mid-40s. By 1950, I was slipping Carla occasional gifts of intelligence, carefully selected morsels to help the Russian cause against America. At that time, I was scrupulous not to give Moscow anything harmful to ourselves, our own agents in the field. I still believe the secret services are the only real expression of a nation's character. Until the mid-50s, I still had hopes, lingering loyalty to what we represented. Self-delusion, of course. We were already America's streetwalkers. I was granted Soviet citizenship 12 years ago. They've given me a couple of medals. What medals? I didn't ask him. Does it matter? Quite a lot to Bill, one supposes. Possibly. We're going to get a bit more from him, I hope. I do hope so, George. He's right about the state of affairs down there. Slovenly. They don't even patrol the perimeter, day or night. I have mentioned it. The thinking on Sarat is that it should be as inconspicuous as possible. I'm concerned for Hayden's safety. Aren't you being a little overdramatic? The only place he can go to is Russia, and we're sending him there anyway. The number of people who need to be told about all this, as we agree, must be kept as small as possible. I suppose your wife will have to be among them. I know you told me she and Hayden are over and done with now, as you said, but 
There's always the unknown factor in matters of the heart, isn't there? I'm thinking about the future, any possible further contact. And if Anne doesn't know, she does meet so many different sorts of people. She gets around. I'm sorry, George. Not at all. I quite take your point. Anne must let us know of any approach, directly or indirectly, made by or on behalf of... Exactly. ...or even apparently on behalf of or merely concerning Bill Hayden. Thank you. I was going to tell her anyway. You might call it balancing the books. Absolutely. You know, George, one thing perplexes me more than anything else about the mole conspiracy. Carla devised Operation Witchcraft primarily as a means of putting poor Percy Alleline on Control's throne. But why didn't Carla want Hayden to take over the circus himself? It surely would have been less difficult to arrange with all Bill's acknowledged accomplishments. No, no. We had the perfect setup. Percy made the running, I slipped stream behind him. Roy and Toby did the legwork. Far better for me to remain the freewheeling subordinate, the laughing cavalier. Being in charge could have bogged me down. Too much admin, diary full of meetings, dinners, chewing the cud in Whitehall. Never happened to control. A natural recluse control. I couldn't have behaved like that and got away with it. No, no, George. Carla and I agreed. I'd have been wasted as cheap. Could have done it, of course. Of course. I'd like to go inside now. Yes, you're right. The Czechoslovakian business was a bit of a desperate throw. But something pretty bold was called for. I was certain control was getting very warm indeed. <laughs> All that burrowing in the files he was doing. It was paying off, I knew. He'd built up an uncomfortably impressive inventory of the number of operations I'd either blown or managed to cripple. And then, of course, he was narrowing his field of suspects. A short list of officers of a certain age, experience, rank. Mm. He did well, considering he was so ill. Surprised, Carla. Was the offer of information from General Stevchek genuine? Good Lord, no. It was a fix from start to finish. Stevchek existed, of course. Still does. Very distinguished man. But he never offered anything to control or anybody else. Did you expect control to send Jim Prido? Well, obviously we needed to be certain control would rise to the bait. We had to spell it out that he'd got to send a big gun to make the story stick. And we knew he'd only settle for someone outside London Station. Someone he trusted. And someone who spoke Czech, of course. Naturally. It had to be a man who was old circus, to bring the temple down a bit. Yes, I see the logic of that. Oh, hell. It was, perhaps, the most famous partnership the circus ever had. You and Jim, back in the old days. The iron fist in the iron glove. Who was it who coined that? I got him home, didn't I? Yes. That was good of you. The thing with Anne was Carla's idea. Was it? Yes. Did you think it was hers? Well, 
The point was, Carla always thought if there was a threat, it would come from you. He said you were quite good, but that you had this one weak spot, Anne. It was a double fix, actually. On the one hand, you weren't likely to think of me as a circus spy if you were preoccupied with what your wife and I got up to in bed. And on the other, if it was well known around the place that I was her lover, it was bound to look like personal vengeance if you ever did suggest I might be the mole. So Carla said, not to strain it, but if possible, Join the queue. Point? Point. Presumably it was on Carla's instructions. You were with Anne on the night of the Predo shoot-up as insurance. Oh, yes, he was adamant on that. <sighs> they tell me I could be away tomorrow or the day after at the latest. Can you make sure any mail gets forwarded from my club? Oh, and the balance of my salary, of course. I will. Anything else? Oh, yes. Nearly forgot. You've got a pen somewhere? Thanks. Girlfriend, give her this. I'm away on work of national importance. Maybe for years. So she can forget me. And I can't take her with me, can I? Even if I could, she'd be a bloody millstone. Oh, and, um... There's one particular boy. A cherub, but no angel. I haven't seen a lot of him. You'd better give him a couple of hundred. Can you do that out of the reptile fund? I would think so. Good. Oh, God, I'm tired. My pen, please. What? Oh. <laughs> Certainly. Sorry. Thank you. Turn it around, Bill. Oh, it's you, Jim. Come to say goodbye? Nice of you. I'm glad to see you haven't lost your touch. Must be in pretty good shape. Why did you get me back? I couldn't leave you rotting in a Czech prison. Russian. Why didn't Carla finish me off? Was that out of delicacy to you? Wasn't that, was it? You both thought that a corpse might create a lot more of us than just another repatriated harmless cripple, didn't you? The shooting wasn't part of the plan, Jim. 
No, not the shooting. But everything else. and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. <coughs> and Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God hath shewed thee all this, for as much as God, God hath shewed, for as much as, for as much as God hath sh sh shewed. For as much as God hath showed thee all this. For as much as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be It seems that at half past ten, Hayden told the guards he felt a bit sick and he thought a breath of air would help him. Because his case was now considered closed, they saw no reason to tear themselves away from some horror film that had just started on the television and they let him wander off. Half an hour later, they thought they'd better go and look for him. He'd received no letters, messages during the day. I was the only outsider to see him. But his suit, had come back from the cleaners. Possibly a message was concealed in it inviting him to a rendezvous. The guards had not inspected the suit before giving it to him. I'm afraid that doesn't surprise me. Any comments, anyone? What if someone went to the cleaners, said he'd lost his ticket, and could he look through the stuff ready for collection? <clears throat> That's one way. Would the Russians kill him? It gives Carla all the reason he needs to cancel the deal on our networks. But Moscow Center prides itself on getting its people back. Important point, Roy. Well, who then? We will all, of course, have to account for our movements last night. Necessary formality. Also, Mendel, Fawn, Ricky Tarn. Then, as to the future, I've been asked to look after things for a while. I'd like everyone to take some leave. And afterwards, there'll be some redeployment. For those of you who wish to remain with the service.
George. Hello. Anne. Just the same. You too? No, um... Julian, was that his name? Jake. And no Jake. Gone. I actually got a job somewhere. I'm quite free at the moment. Enjoying it. Uncle Gazelgatz is away too, Madrid, so I've got the house all to myself. I brought you this. It goes, um... Oh, George. Very nice of you. Well, what's been happening? How have you all been? Did Bill say anything about me? I mean, me as a person, what he thought about me? Not really. Are you glad he's dead? Please, don't say not really. No, I'm not glad. There was a moment when I knew, when I heard his voice talking to Polyakov. Just for a moment, I wanted to shoot him. But it passed. Bill betrayed totally, didn't he? Everything, everyone. Was he taking some kind of revenge? He must have talked to you quite a lot. Should I have passed all that on to you? Pillow talk. Describe Bill. Yet another man trying to find a little place in history. Oh, but George, Bill standing at the centre of some secret stage, playing world against world. He had a wonderful time. He enjoyed himself. He loved being a traitor. I'm glad he's dead. His life was over. I'm glad for him. Did you love him? Anne, did you? No, George. Poor George. Life's such a puzzle to you, isn't it? 